Welcome back to the county seat. Our topic today is uh, GIS and the collection of data uh, about roads and transportation systems. Joining us for a roundtable discussion, John Hurst from the He's the senior policy advisor from, I've got to get this right, from the Governor's Public Lands Policy Coordination Office. I would like to see your business cards, John. <laughs> I imagine that they're extra king size. We also have Cynthia Nielsen, who is the Sevier County GIS coordinator. Mark Ward, who is the public lands attorney for the Utah Association of Counties. Thank you for joining us for this. So we now have gone through the story. We've seen exactly the process by which you go uh, to collect data, the accuracy, the different forms of, of, of how you collect data. Why are we doing it? I'm, I mean, f from, from the state's perspective, um, I understand that one of the things you have to do is, is prove that you have roads and courts nowadays. Is that, is that how that works? That's true. You need to actually have some evidence to show that you know, the road is actually there and that people use that road. And so we're taking the GIS data that Cynthia has done and the other counties have done, and we put that together, and we'll be using that as a way of proof and evidence in up, any upcoming litigation. Now, have, have you guys, is there, I mean, this is not just like an ongoing thing. You guys have kind of made a project out of this. It's like, we're gonna do this. What is that all about? Well, we decided um, the state has been working closely with the counties, with the Utah Association of Counties to, um, you know, for this, RS-2477 issues have been going on for quite some time. And we've decided, you know, we need to really get down to um, the end game on this. And we're seeing every year, you know, the people who use these roads, especially they, before 1976, which is the key date there, they're getting older. People who worked on those roads in the 40s and 50s, they're passing away. And so we really want to be able to take the time now to make sure we get that, um, get the evidence from these people. Now, Mark, this is like a, 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 being an attorney. This is, this is a key thing about getting people to come out with testimony because the, the courts, I mean, why can't, why can't somebody just have a, a story about their grandfather working, they knew he worked on the road or something like that? How come that doesn't work? Well, it helps in court to have someone there who's an eyewitness, someone who remembers the road being used back during the years when we, when we have to show it. So we're making a big push, and we appreciate the opportunity here today to make this uh, also. Uh, we're making a big push for people anywhere and everywhere in the state who remembers using county roads, rural roads, to come forward and, and to contact the county and the state, let them know so we can interview them and they may be potential witnesses. So witnesses, live witnesses, Chad, are very important in the, in the uh, court process. So, um, well, let's clear up exactly why, why this is. How come you have to be able to prove prior to 1976? Why is that such a big deal? Well, federal law provided for the creation of roads over, over federal land, but only until October 21, 1976. After that, Congress said, we're not going to grant any more right-of-ways under this particular law called RS-2477. So therefore, all the roads that, we, that the counties and the state want to prove under RS-2477, we have to do so relative to that date. We, in other words, we have to show that the roads were in use by the public for a certain period of time prior to October 21, 1976, or that they were publicly constructed prior to that date. Okay, we actually have uh, hit the clock here and we've got so much more information. We're gonna take a quick commercial break and come back. There's a lot more to cover on this topic and, uh, and a plea for you, the viewers, to actually become involved in this process. We'll be back with County Seat in just a minute. In order for there to be adventure, there must first be a land that offers it. In order for there to be discovery, there must first be something undiscovered. It's time you discovered Northeastern Utah's dinosaur lands, the trails, water, beauty, and history that have been 65 million years in the making. Take your journey to a destination where adventure is only limited by your imagination. Join us in Uinta County, Undiscovered Utah. How would you spend an extra day in Utah Valley?
stay one more day. Visit utahvalley.com to make reservations. Utah Valley, bring everyone together. So, what brings you to town? What brings anyone to St. George? A couple rounds of golf, a little relaxation. What is that all? Is there more? In a retirement community? Should have stuck with the back nine. Take a look. Take a glimpse. Take a peek. You'll be surprised by what you find. Check us out at DeseretPcomplex.com. Our phone number is 435-843-4020. Adventure, beauty, excitement. Tooele County Parks and Recreation. Bringing communities together.